Hey guys, it is Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries, and as usual, always very excited to be on with you. Um, this is going to be a wealth transfer word. As you know, uh, the last couple of years, we've been in the midst of the wealth transfer and everything that God's going to do um, through the wealth transfer. Now, since probably the beginning of 2021, I've released three or four prophetic words or prophecies, times and seasons words, over the body of Christ about wealth transfer. And um, it comes in many forms. I released the word about um, uh, the Lord is, is basically taking from the wicked and giving to the righteous, yes. But there's keys to receiving. And so this right now, I'm about to release a two-part prophecy. This is the next step. I have about nine wealth wealth transfer words that I that I have not released all of them. This one is basically number five and six. And the Lord told me it was time to release these two words, but he didn't want me to just release the words. He wanted me to um, teach with these two words the keys to being on the receiving end of all that's been prophesied. And so you have to understand, you can't just be like, oh, God's going to take all the money from the evil people and that, that they've built up and he's going to transfer it to the righteous. Okay, here's the situation. Some of you think that it's going to be handed over to you and you're going to be able to go get a Corvette. That's not the point of the wealth transfer. Also, some of you are like, well, I'm going to get it and then, you know, I'm going to be so perfectly blessed. I'm going to live high on the hog. I'm going to be able to get the best house on the block. Nope. That's all the complete opposite. What we have seen as blessed in the body of Christ, even American Christians, is um, all those things. And I could sit here and name them off, but um, I'm going to get right to the word and just so you understand, the Lord's been leading me to go deeper into teaching you to understand the prophecies that he's releasing. And so if you want to watch me and you only want a 10 minute word, I'm the wrong person. Um, I don't do that. The Lord has told me he's like Liberty. You can't just get on and give someone a word and not tell them what to do with it. You can't explain. You have to explain to them the, the negatives, like their responsibility, and then explain to them the positives and what our role is. He said, the body of Christ has to understand how to walk out the prophecies and walk out the word. Um, we can't just go around and be like, I had this word spoken over me, and now I'm just going to come sit here on this mountain, and I'm going to wait for you to let it fall out of the sky, Jesus. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, there's a preparation. There's prayer, declaration, a determination we have to have on our end, but also we have to take the actions that the Lord tells us, which means we have to do our part. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been having a little bit of some chest congestion, so just ignore it. And then the cold air is making it worse. Um, but uh, we have to understand that there's a responsibility and the Lord about 10 or 11 days ago, just so you know, every day he's telling, he's poking me. He's like, Liberty, it's time to talk about the wealth transfer. It's time for you to release the next couple of words that I already gave you. These words were given to me in 2022. And so I've been sitting on them for a while. Jesus has been sitting on them for a while. And um, I'm finally able today because he said, I don't want you to just release the words, Liberty. I want you to teach them keys to receiving from the wealth transfer, what's already been prophesied. Uh, there's more words, there's more prophecies that I know other people, other prophets have not released and I have some that I'm sitting on. God said it's not time, we're not there yet. And so because of that, um, you know, we release when the Lord tells us, but he said it was time to release these two words and to actually teach on the on three keys there's more keys you guys but for for this particular prophetic well prophecy times and seasons word 
There's three keys he wants me to go over. They're all keys that I've addressed in every prophecy I've already released. And he said, especially if you're new to my channel, he wants you to know those keys. Because here's the thing. You can stand in front of a door all day long, but if it's locked, you ain't getting in. If you don't have a key, you ain't getting in. And if Jesus hasn't given you the key, okay, uh, if, if your neighbor asks you to watch their house while they're on vacation and their house is locked up, they're going to give you a key to get in to make sure that things are good, whatever, you know, water the plants, make sure nothing weird is going on, whatever. And so it's the same thing. The Lord is saying, this is what you have. It's on the other side of the door. And there's many doors to this wealth transfer blessing, but um, there's keys to open the doors. And it's not as simple as it being spoken like by me. Let's say I prophesy a word. It doesn't make it so for you. If you aren't doing the things that he has told you to do to prepare to receive the wealth. And so as you know, um, uh, I released a word about the wealth transfer was joy. The Lord said he's going to be pouring out uh, a wealth of joy from heaven. Just so you know, wealth is not always money. It's not finances. Um, wealth is, it's good health and not meant for that to rhyme. It's joy. It's peace on a whole nother level. Those are wealth. Those are our heavenly treasures being poured out on us. They don't come in the form of um, being able to buy a bigger house or have extra money left over after you pay your bills so you can go eat out at Cracker Barrel, okay? I don't like Cracker Barrel. <clears throat> That's why I kind of use them. But the thing is, I don't like them, so I wouldn't do that. And so, but the thing is, is that's not the reason for the money. It isn't for us to um, eat out more and to have a better car. Even maybe you do need a better car. God wants you to have that if it's absolutely necessary, but that's not the reason. Um, wealth is, is all that heaven has, all that heaven carries. And number one, and this is not a key. I'm just putting this out there because I want to get you going in the glory and get your spirit ready and lubed up to receive what the Lord is saying. Um, the number one heavenly treasure is the salvation bought for you on the cross. It's what Christ did for you to save your soul. That's the first wealth transfer. And anything connected to us that we receive <clears throat> is going to be so we can take that wealth that we already know to the harvest that doesn't know and bring them in. Amen. Okay. So, um, the Lord began to speak to me and I'm just going to go into, um, the two parts of the word. And this is what basically the Lord's calling it. Basically the wealth transfer treasures from the deep are being released. Treasures from the deep are being released. And he says, how can you receive to have my people learn how through the keys, how they can receive from this wealth transfer. And he was speaking to me to read Psalm 33, six through nine. And Psalm 33, six through nine says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters to the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. That's the first, wealth, first form of wealth, you guys. The fear of the Lord. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. And so uh, in verse 7, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. And the Lord said, this is the wealth transfer. There is treasures stored up for my people. There are treasures that I have been preparing to release. But my people need to know the keys to receive and to open those doors to the release. It doesn't just happen by declaring, praying, binding, rebuking, uh, 
walking around going, God already said it, it's already done. Yes, there is a form of faith involved in that, but you also need a key to open a locked door. Amen. And that's why it's important that you learn, you know, repentance and uh, are you positioning yourself to receive? Are you already a wise steward of what you have? There's so many things, you guys. We're about to get into that. And so the Lord basically said, <clears throat> as he took me to read um, those verses, uh, he says, this is all about the wealth transfer, the transfer of wealth and the treasure that's been laid up for my people, not just in heaven, but in the physical. God has stored up provision for us in the deep. The world will see and be brought low through the seeing of the provision of God's people poured out on them on a massive scale. And then if you read um, 10 through 12, it says, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his inheritance. And so this is huge, you guys. We have been chosen. The remnant has been chosen as his inheritance. Not just uh, the Jewish people, but those of us that have been grafted in. The remnant. We're all the remnant. And we have been chosen to basically show the nations who is the boss, which is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He's the boss. And so um, God doesn't want us walking in a way that gives him a bad name. But he also is not going to let us unlock a door until we have the keys and we learn those keys so we can receive. And so we have a part to play in receiving. And when the Lord kept telling me, Liberty, you need to talk about the next two wealth words. He said, my people have got to understand. If they're going to participate with me, they have to know how to receive. They have to position themselves for me to pour into them. And if you know, one of the words I released, it was probably over a year ago, more than a year ago. Um, the Lord said, tell my people, I will not transfer the wealth from the wicked to the wicked. He said, I need to do the, sh the shaking so that I know who's who. I'm not just going to take the money from the wicked and give it to wicked Christians, people who think they're serving Christ, but they're not. And so he said, that money is going to go to waste. He said, it needs to be transferred to the real remnant that's going to use the money wisely, use it to bring in the harvest, use it for his kingdom. Yes, you might have to use it to pay your housing expenses and uh, and, and be able to do ministry. And, and there's other bills that have to be covered. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the bulk of it will be used for his kingdom. If he can trust you with that, then that's putting you on the receiving end. If he knows you're going to use it for his kingdom. If he knows you're not going to run out and buy a bigger house and a Corvette. I don't even know. I don't even know what a cool car is right now. Because I don't like sports cars. I like SUVs. So, um, I don't think it's cool to have a sports car. I think that whole thing is silly. Not saying you shouldn't get one. Enjoy it. But for me, my best car would be an SUV, not a sports car. And so, um... Everybody's viewpoint is different. The point is, that's not what the wealth transfer is about. He wants you to have treasures in heaven, but sometimes our idea of what the treasures are, are not what his idea is. Now, he does say he will add the desires of your heart, and I will throw that in there, because he doesn't want you to live in poverty. He doesn't want you to live like a pauper, but... He also wants you to put him first in all things. And this is what the keys are going to be about. Okay. How you position yourself to make it known to Jesus that you're putting him first. That you're going to practice these keys. You're going to do what you need to do to be given these keys to open the doors to those forms of wealth coming in. And so the Lord said, 
um, everything that's been prophesied, uh, my people need to understand where we're at now in the times and seasons. They need to know there's a part they play. Okay. And that's why this is more, this is prophecy, but it's teaching. And so, um, the Lord said with Psalm 33, 10 through 12, um, we are his own. And he said the whole chapter actually of Psalm 33 is referencing and prophesying about the wealth transfer. And you need to go back and read it, read the whole chapter, read it with that mindset and it's going to blow your mind. And so, so here's the three keys for being on the receiving end of the wealth that is being transferred. You guys, we're about to see some big shifts, um, some massive breakthroughs, some, uh, financial breakthroughs for ministries that the enemy has tried everything to delay their funds, to hold back, to hinder. Um, you know, you guys, I could go on for hours because there's so many different views and ways and depths to look at what God's doing when he's taking us the wilderness way around. As you know, I prophesied that, I don't even know, four months ago that he's taking the remnant, the wilderness way around because he needs us to remove some things, get rid of some things and get fully positioned to receive from the wealth transfer. And so he's getting rid of things. And it doesn't mean he thought you weren't gonna use the money wisely that he was already providing. It's just, there's more for us to see. And sometimes he has to allow a work to be happening so we can see, amen? Okay, here's the three keys. And then I'm gonna give you the second half to the prophecy and then I'm going to close and I'm going to pray for you, okay? Here's three keys that the Lord told me that you need to understand right now in this times and seasons. Number one, obedience. Being obedient to the Lord and to his plans. I'm just going to read what he told me and I wrote it down. To his plans is key and being willing to obey it at all costs. Why is it so important? The Lord is at, is wants, you know, you're saying, why is it so important? Because the enemy has no room to get in. Um, there's no open doors if you are obedient to the Lord. He will not bless those who are not obedient. Those who are not obedient do not get to go forward into the promised land. Just like those with Moses didn't get to go in because they were disobedient. You must be doing everything his way and putting him first in everything. We must position ourselves to be blessed. And so basically what he's saying is, look at what happened with Moses and he, they were freed, he, he went in, they were delivered from Egypt, but there was a lot of complaining, whining, a lack of faith, disobedience. And so because of that, he had to let all the people die off except for everybody under the age of 20. That'll preach right there on its own. And there's been prophecies about that age group. And so, um, but the Lord said the same way Moses ended up not getting to go in and people, certain people, disobedient people, they didn't get to go in. And the Lord said, um, and this is, if you, if you go back and watch all my words, you guys, you track with what the Lord is speaking. There's a theme that keeps connecting all throughout the prophetic words I've released and the prophecies. And so he said, I need my people to be obedient so I can take them into the promised land. He said, they don't get to go in and receive from the wealth transfer, which is in the promised land, the milk and the honey, if they're not obedient. He said, if they don't obey me in every area, if they're more afraid of man, if they're more afraid of pleasing people, if they're uh, led around by manipulation, not holiness and purity and a pure heart. They're led around by the flesh, by pride, by arrogance, by haughtiness. Um, if they're led around by that, he said, I cannot pour into them. That's disobedience. And he said, I will not bless disobedience. He said, I will not do it. And so obedience is number one key. And that means it doesn't matter whether you like what he's telling you to do, you obey, first of all, because you fear God. Secondly, because you want to please him and you're willing 
to take whatever result comes with that. Sometimes it's losses. Sometimes it's pruning. Sometimes it's people not liking you. You better get over that because not everybody's going to like the remnant and they probably shouldn't like you. If you're too liked, that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. If, if you've never offended anybody in the Lord by telling the truth, then that's a problem. Then you're not speaking the truth enough. And so, um, obedience is the first key and listening to his voice and listening quickly, even if you don't always understand being obedient and listening to that inner voice, inner small, the Lord, not shouting your face off, but he's telling you in your inner heart what you should be doing and you shouldn't be doing. You need to obey what he's telling you. That's a key to opening the first key to opening the doors to the wealth transfer on your behalf to actually receive all of the wealth, not just finances, but joy, peace, truth, all of that, you guys, that heaven offers that the world does not give you. It only comes from Jesus. Amen. Okay. Number two, um, second key, the Lord said is kingdom giving. Don't get offended and don't stop listening. You need to listen to the whole word, you guys, because I'm telling you right now, you will not be on the receiving end. And I haven't finished with the second part of the prophecy. You don't want to miss the second part. Key number, number two, kingdom giving. Faithfully giving your tithes and your offering is key to being on the receiving end of the wealth transfer. Why, you ask? Because if you're not supporting his kingdom work on earth, he's not going to give you more money when you're not even using the little bit that he's given you to help see his work go forth on the earth. Let this blow your mind. They say only 10% of the Christians support 100% of God's work. Only 10% statistically on the earth actually fully give their 10% tithe, and then offerings above that. Do you know how sad that is? You need to understand God's not okay with that. That's not the remnant he's coming for. In the book of Acts, they all sold everything and brought the money and the finances to the apostles and laid it at their feet. And the apostles were able to separate the money and use it for all the traveling and all the food costs and all the things to go get souls saved. They brought in unity and dropped everything at their feet and they sacrificed all for the kingdom. And we have Christians who get offended if you think they should give 10% to God. And so you guys be ready because if you don't give, you're, about, you're getting a spanking right now. And just accept it because God is not coming back for a remnant that's not willing to sell everything and lay it at the apostles' feet so the work of the cross can get done. That's the remnant he's coming for. That's willing to get rid of all things to go serve Jesus and make sure that there's funds to do it. God will not use you as a funnel, as he said, if you don't support my work being done on the earth, basically, if you don't support his work for to reach the souls, if you don't donate to ministries, if you don't give to those you know are doing the work and doing real f work that are they have fruit to show for it, and and you don't you don't think it's important to support them so they can keep go getting the harvest, or keep doing deliverance, or keep. Uh, just doing, growing people, teaching people, pouring into people, all the things that they're called to do. If you're not doing that, God's not going to give you more because you're not, you're not using it for him. You have to prepare yourself to be on the receiving end so that what he pours out, he'll give it to you because you know what? He says, you know what? I will give it to you, whoever you are. Because I know you will allow me to use you as a funnel. 
What goes in is going to go back out to my kingdom. What comes in is going to go back out to my kingdom. And I know that it is, so I will use you. It's really sad if the statistics are correct that only 10% of Christians let God use them as a funnel. That is sad. And you know what? The devil's laughing. He's like, yep, oh yeah, sit around wishing for some wealth transfer. But you people are a bunch of losers. You can't even give. You don't even care about God's kingdom on the earth. And the enemy knows everything that's been prophesied. And he knows there's all kinds of wealth available to us. And he also is not stupid on the fact that he knows why we don't got it. Because God's like, I can't give it to you, whoever you are. Your name could be whoever. Because you're not going to use it for me. You're going to build your own kingdom. You're not going to build my kingdom. So let's go over that. First, let me read this verse to you. Luke 16, 10 and 11. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, which is money, stuff, um, who will commit uh, to your trust, true riches. So basically the Lord is saying, uh, if you're faithful with the little he's already given you, then he's going to give you more. He's going to pour out more. You guys, this is all kingdom principle. It's all Bible. Read it. If you want to question it or be offended, read your Bible because it's all kingdom principles, all of it. And so he said, the little bit I've given you, you're not using wisely. You're not giving to the kingdom. You're not making sure that God is, uh, is basically, um, promoted on the earth. You're not putting into making sure that churches and ministries can pay their bills and they can reach the souls because uh, you have to understand God knows not everybody's called to go preach, but whatever you're called to do, whatever, if, if you're not called to be doing that full time, whatever job you do have, you can give so that other people can go preach. Your part is giving. Your part is releasing funds into the kingdom so that the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors, everybody can do their job and be able to have what they need to do it. It's pointless. If nobody's giving to the kingdom, then we don't have what we need to do it. And so if you want to be on the receiving end, ties and offering is key, is one of the keys. Um, and the Lord said um, on Luke 19, 16 through 19, and then it's just listen, you guys. Then it came first, say, he came first to the master. Uh, you, you have earned 10 minas. And he said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you were faithful in the very little, have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also can be over five cities. Um, for I feared you. Be and then this is, I skipped some verses. And then this is the last person that gets nothing because they're not using the key of Okay. Um, for I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you do not deposit and reap what you do not sow. And the verse right before that is the person that went and hid the mina and didn't do anything with it. They were too afraid. They just kept it for their, for their self. That's what that means. So let's talk about this in a real form. What that means is... Um, they basically, God gave them this little bit and they did nothing with it. They didn't multiply it. And you may not know it, but actually giving money away is multiplying. It multiplies it back to you. That's biblical. It multiplies it into the hands of the person that gets it. That money's blessed. Those finances are blessed. And so, uh, the Lord, the one that gained the most and did the most with the little bit they were given, he gave them 10 cities. He gave them a whole bunch more money. He poured wealth into them because he knew they would use it. 
wisely for the kingdom of God. And you need to understand God's not giving you wealth so you can go build a worldly kingdom and, and live like Egypt. The whole point of the wealth transfer is that it gets poured into people who are actually going to give it away so that crusades can happen. Ministries can pay their bills. Prophets can go prophesy and lay hands on people and impart fire. And evangelists can go preach the gospel and get souls saved. And apostles can continue their apostolic work so that people get all the five gifts going. So the thing is you need to understand is if only 10% is putting into 100% of the work, let that blow your mind. How much money out there belongs to God that could be used for his kingdom and it's not being given? So much more that the body of Christ could do. Did you know that if everybody was doing what they were supposed to, biblically, that none of people like me or other big ministries that do global work or crusades or whatever would never have to get on and beg and say, we have a crusade in a week and we still need $100,000. That shouldn't be happening, body of Christ. The money should just be there if everybody's doing their part. Everybody, if everybody's doing their part. So the Lord said tithes and offering is key number two. Faithfully giving tithes and offerings. So, um, and just so you, you know, this video is meant to be long because it's a teaching with the prophecy, okay? You need to watch the whole thing because you're learning things that you might not have known. And maybe you need to be reminded of these keys because so many people are excited about the wealth transfer, but you haven't pre prepared yourself to receive. This is what the Lord said, Liberty. They need to understand just being a believer and thinking you're a part of the remnant doesn't make you on the receiving end. You have to actually be using what you already have for God's kingdom. So then he knows he can trust you with more to go to his kingdom. He wants to make sure it ends up being used for souls, for revivals, for, for all the things God's calling all of us to do that are actually doing it with a pure heart and, and we mean what we're doing. And so, okay, tithe and offerings. I'm going to give you a real quick on what the difference is and we're going to go to key three. Um, tithe is 10% <clears throat> off the top of everything, all income. That means anything that comes into your storehouse through earning it, through inheritances, through selling of a house, selling of a car, selling of land, 10% off the top immediately goes to God's kingdom. And if you have a local church that you're faithful to, and that's where you go get fed and your family goes to kids church and all that, they should get your 10%. If let's say I know I have people who tithe to my ministry, I'm their church. When I'm near them, they come to my services and they follow me online. I'm their online church. That's how they see it. They want to tithe to me. But I recommend if you have a local body that, that you're going to physically, you need to be giving your 10% to your local church, to your local pastors so they can run the church and have salaries and have everything that they need to keep the ministry going. And let me just throw this in there. How do you think ministries run? We're nonprofit. How do you think we run? The only way we do what we do is on donations. People, God's people have to be giving so that we can run. We're not just a human being out doing whatever. No, we have massive bills and liability insurance and all kinds of other things that have to be paid every single week or every single month on top of our regular life, on top of our regular rents and our mortgages and, and uh, our own bills and our own cars and, and keeping everything up and, and, and covering our kids and everything our kids need. You understand medical, like ministry, it takes money to run a ministry. God needs God's people to be faithful to giving so that ministries can do the work. No ministry should, should be without mon money right now. 
every ministry that is actually doing it, they're on fire, they're pure of heart, and they actually have fruit, and you can see the fruit from what they've accomplished, their bank accounts should have too much money in them. And I can feel the glory. There should be too much money in our accounts. I should not have to get on and beg all the way up to the last day to have the funds come in for the Pakistan crusade. But that's what happened. The final $15,000 came in the day before I got on the plane. And sometimes God allows it to happen that way because he's testing our faith. But other times the Lord's like, hey, my people, if you were all giving, then there should have been plenty of money for Liberty to have $60,000, which is very tiny in American money compared to the cost in Pakistan to go to Pakistan and win souls. We had to spend $60,000 to do one crusade and to cover my expenses, to fly there, to fly back and all that security cameras, you name it. It had to be done. It was $60,000. And 57,389 people received Christ. That's massive fruit from one crusade. Nobody that does the true ministry of work of the Lord and that's a part of the end time remnant, their bank accounts should not be so dry that they can't even figure out how to do a crusade. Get it together, body of Christ. And you guys already expect this from me. I'm real with you. If you've been following me for a while, I'm straight up. This is why some people don't like me, especially religious people, because they say I'm too real. No, I'm, I'm saying what the Lord is saying. Jesus was very real. And so no ministry that's actually got fruit and is doing what God's called them to do and, and they're moving mountains and, and all these great things are happening should not have to worry about their bank account not having enough money to do the work. If every Christian was doing what they were supposed to, okay? I told you guys, this is a teaching. This is basically a message, a teaching on the prophecy so you can understand, okay? So 10% off all things. Just so you know, 10% is not the limit. What does it say? Malachi 3, um, 8 through 12. Listen. I hope you're still watching and you're still listening. Okay? I love you guys. Jesus loves you so much. You need to learn these keys. I'm telling you right now. If you want to be on the receiving end. Okay? I'm telling you. 100%. You need to hear the word of the Lord. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? Yes, I'm being sassy because Jesus is, there's, he's sassy. This is Old Testament, but it's all Jesus and he's sassy. Um, in what way have we robbed you? They're saying with the smarty pants sass. In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with the curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food for my house. Woo, man, I can feel the glory. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour it out to such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will destroy, not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit um, for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delight, a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. And so go and read Malachi 3, 8 through 12, what I just read. Man, I can feel the glory so strong. So 10% is already God's. You actually don't own it. If you're keeping it, you're robbing God. The tithes goes to God automatically. You don't get to choose on that. That's obedience. Key number one is obedience. And the Lord says, if you don't give, then uh, he says, even the whole nation, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Did you know that the storehouse is 
my ministry. It's other global ministries. It's your ch local church. That's God's storehouse. When you give or you tithe to your local church, you're, you're putting food in God's house. So the pastor can have a salary. The pastor can pay the bills. The pastor can reach the lost and then, and then raise up and disciple the lost. And, um, I could go into all kinds of things on this teaching. You guys, you have no idea what it takes. If you don't do ministry, you have no idea. It is not whatsoever for the faint of heart. It is not going to church once a week and hearing a message. We have given our whole lives to this. You don't, you have to understand it's a life on our face, all to Jesus. And so you have to understand the Lord is saying, bring the tithes in to my storehouse so that my house will have food. How are we supposed to feed people spiritually if we can't, if the, if the church can't cover its bills, if the church can't pay for the building, if the church can't cover the Wi-Fi, do you get what you get my drift? Every ministry has bills first that have to be paid. Then we have to have money to go out and do the big things. That money goes, that $60,000 we raised went to one crusade. But man, there are no words to describe the value of the fruit. All those souls that were saved and the 25,000 documented miracles. It's worth every penny. It's worth millions. There's no limit to the worth on that. And so no ministry should not have food in their storehouse. If every Christian is giving and using this key, amen. If every Christian is giving and doing what they're supposed to, and you're using the key, man, every ministry storehouse should be overflowing with money to pay for crusades, to pay for uh, uh, revivals and, and reaching the lost and mass baptisms and, and whatever, everything we do there's there, we spend probably $25,000 per event we have to do. That's local for the venue, for traveling expenses, for hotels, to cover the speakers coming in. We have to pay, you have to, we have to pay for everything. And so nobody should lack everybody brought sold all their stuff and brought it to the apostles and it said everybody had enough for all that they needed to serve the lord and the lord is saying the wealth transfer is not going to be given to people who don't tithe because you're already robbing god you're already hurting his kingdom and it says here if you do that he's going to curse you with a curse which means the money you do have isn't going to last. It's you're not going to have enough. You're never going to have enough. Your, your fruit, you're going to have no fruit because you're not putting him first. That's a principle in the kingdom. 100% read your Bible. I love you guys, but I'm being straight up now offerings. Let's go on to what offerings mean. Um, an example of an offering is you giving above the 10%. Why? Why does God biblically call that an offering? You just saw it. I just read it to you because the first 10% is already his. That's not an offering. That's not a sacrifice. He already owns it. You give that to him. You don't own it. You shouldn't be touching it. I would be afraid to touch my 10%. Like uh, Robert Morris says, you can be 90% blessed or 100% cursed. What's your choice? I would, I fear God enough. I would not withhold my 10%. I don't want to be cursed. You're, you're literally cursing yourself. And some of you are going to be like, oh, but ja, but ja, ja. No, dude, I could go into so many things. Study the New Testament. They actually found, you gotta remember, I went to Bible college. They actually, when you know things, you know things, okay? They found that the apostles actually and the disciples gave 23%, not 10. Uh-huh, swallow that, 
okay? You guys expect me to be real, and I'm being real, okay? I love you. Jesus loves you, but you need to hear the word of the Lord right now because here's the thing. Man, I can feel the glory. God wants you to be on the receiving end. He wants you to receive from the wealth transfer. He wants you to be a shining light and a funnel for his kingdom. But he will not if you're not putting these keys into place. Because he knows you're going to be like the wicked servant. And you're going to hoard it for yourself and you're going to do nothing with it. He can't use you if you're doing that. Okay, so back to offering. An offering is what you give as a sacrifice above the tithe. The tithe already belongs to God. An offering is what you're actually giving extra. Now, let me tell you this right now. Offerings are not just money. You can give an offering to a ministry of land, of jewelry, of gold and silver, of houses, of um, and a part to an inheritance. Um, it's not. It's not just finances. And so in Africa, a friend of mine, which I'm going to actually release a short video from her. She's going to put it together for me, but she does a teaching and she travels around and she's a minister and her and her husband and she was in Africa and uh, they took part in, a, they were doing a giant crusade and, and they received the offering in Africa. And she said they had people bringing them deeds to their land. They had people bringing them um, uh, gold, silver, um, things of value. And so you're probably wondering, well, what does the ministry do with that? We can go then take the gold and silver, silver, turn it into money, put it in the account, pay for a crusade, pay for fire nights to go reach the Gen Z's, pay for the revival in Oklahoma. Thank you so much to those of you who have already given to that. We need about $25,000 to cover the revival in Oklahoma to go do the youth revival, to reach the youth that have fallen away there. That's a whole nother story. But the thing is, it takes money. The kingdom of God needs funds to do what we do. So if you give a piece of land, let's say you have a piece of land that Aunt Martha left you 10 years ago. You probably aren't ever going to use it. It's just sitting somewhere in Idaho. Take the deed. Give that to a ministry you follow as an offering. Your 10% should already be going to your local church. But if you have other ministries that you follow, that you that's where your offering should go. Uh, you should not give your, unless I, like, I have people who tithe to me. Thank you. I'm your church online. Some of you can't leave your house and go to church. And so you follow my ministry. Amen. Um, but if you have a local church, your 10% goes there. But you can give your offerings to any other ministry that you follow, that you believe in and trust, that feeds you. And you can take that piece of property in Idaho that you were left by. My, you know, Aunt Martha left to you that you ain't ever going to use, give it over to a ministry and then they can get a realtor, sell it, and then use that land to pay for something God's calling that ministry to do, to raise funds for something. It can go towards those funds. If you send gold or silver, that can be cashed in. Um, land, homes, cars, um, you name it jewelry it can all be cashed in and that money can be used for the kingdom you can give those items you don't just have to send money or get on tithely and give and have a partnership or uh send a check um i've had people send me gold and silver and so you can if, if maybe your investments are in gold and silver you can send a ministry some gold they can sit on it as an investment or they can cash it in and pay for something that they need. And so it's not just money. You could be sitting on something and you're like, well, I don't really have a lot of money. I mean, I, I own this house over here or I own this land or I have jewelry left to me from my grandma that I don't really use and I don't really need it. But, you know, it, it it's real gold and diamonds, so I, I don't want to just chuck it. You can give it to a ministry. That's a part of an offering. You can, all those things are an offering, but an offering is above your 10%. And I'm going to be closing up, you guys. Here's the thing. I'm not rushing on my teachings because God was very clear with me. Teach on this liberty. And if you've been following me for a while, you know this is a part of getting your boat ready. God will not bless a boat that is sinking already. God will not bless a servant who's already using their money wickedly and not even giving to God's kingdom. 
If your boat is already in a position to sink, if he pours more in, it's going to fully sink. If you already got holes in your boat, there was no holes in Noah's boat. Then if God pours in, it's going to kill you and sink you and curse you. It's not going to be a blessing. And so God wants it to be a blessing. Amen. And so like an example of, here's an offering. Here's an example. Every bit of money that comes in to Spirit Move covers our staff and it covers every event we do. We don't have fancy stuff. A bunch of us don't own things. We spend the money on Jesus and the call. And so, but even me, even though the money's being donated to the ministry, I give away about 30%. So I immediately off of everything that comes into spirit move, 10% goes to the Lord. And it gets given to where he tells me to give it to. And then I always give an offering above. So let's say I'm getting my tithe for however many, however long, I don't even know. Let's just say my tithe is is a thousand dollars okay from the ministry i give that thousand dollars and then i'll usually give another thousand to another ministry so i'm giving double 20 percent very rarely do i even give less than 30 percent away then i have to take what's left the 70 percent and try to use it to go do fire nights and do all if you if you follow me for a while you know most of what I do is free I maybe have charged for three events in the history of my whole ministry and so where does that funds come from when people come to the events they give offerings but it's never enough to cover the event it's only enough to cover about 40% of the cost to go do that event because we have a team, they have to all fly in, we have to rent cars, we have to put gas in those cars, we have to all eat for those three or four days, wherever we go, you get you get the drift. And so ministry should not be suffering if everybody's doing what they're supposed to. So not just 10%, but you should be giving offerings. Now maybe you're, you don't have land to give away and all that, your offering would just be extra cash. Then you need to make a plan to do that. Like for me, I have certain ministries I give to every month above my tithe. Actually, 20 different ministries I'm partnered with. I ain't playing. The funds that come into me, they go to Jesus. And if you want to be on the receiving end of the wealth transfer, then what comes in, God needs to trust the little that he's been giving you. You're using it right. You're using it for him. Then he's going to give you more. But if he knows you're not using it for him, he's not going to give you more. It's not going to happen. You have to have the first key of obedience, the second key of tithes and offerings. And you know what? God has had me give away cars. You're probably thinking, well, I own a house, but I got to live in it. I know people who have given away houses and God gave them a better house. Here's what God told them. God said, I want you to give your house away to that family or I want you to give it to that ministry so they can sell it and they can fund that thing that they need to do, that they're trying to raise, they can fund that new building they need or the children's center or the youth pavilion. They're raising $300,000, you're gonna give them your house so they can sell it and they can build that youth pavilion to start reaching the teens in their neighborhood. And he was like, that's a lot. Like, that's a lot. And the Lord's like, you really think you can outgive me? That's what the Lord said. You really think you can outgive me? You don't think I can keep my word and return to you pressed down, shaken up, and overflowing blessing? You think you giving away a house is big? I gave away my son. You can give away a house. You can give away a car. He said, you can never outgive me is what he told him. You'll never outgive me. So when I tell you to give, be obedient. I have given away cars. I have given away all kinds of things. 
I could have sold those cars and had the money, but God said, give it away. So I did. And so we have to be obedient when he tells us. And then guess what happened to me? Because I was obedient and three different times I gave away cars to people who needed them. They had no car. God gave me a car. Yep. Somebody contacted the ministry and they were like, we want to give you a Lexus. I would never buy a Lexus for myself ever. Like that's not a thought. I'm more of like a, I just wouldn't do that. Like I would buy like a Toyota Sequoia because I like like SUVs and they're like a beast and I have a thing about getting hit by drunk drivers. So I like big cars. And so, um, but they got a hold of me and they said, we feel like the Lord's telling us to give you our Lexus. See, that's what happens when you're obedient. You can't outgive God. You may not see something perfect happening in the first nine days after you give or the first eight days if somebody's trying to preach a prosperity message. God will use all things for your good and for his glory. If he makes you wait, there's a reason. But I'm telling you this right now, I am living proof. Blessings overflowing, shaken down, pressed. You name it. And anytime I get extra funds, very rarely, because we're a ministry, you guys, what comes in goes out for Jesus. I give it away. I'm like, okay, Jesus, who can I give it to? Who needs it? Where does it need to go? What ministry can I bless? And I get all excited. And then I'll take $10,000 and I'll go give it to this ministry. And I, it's the most exciting thing for me to go and give that money away. It, it, it's the most amazing feeling to know that you're obeying God and you're helping someone else do it. You're blessing the kingdom. Amen. No ministry should have to beg for money if everybody's doing it. Just like in the book of Acts, everybody pitched in all they had. Everybody gave and they had enough to do everything God called them to do. That's how it should be right now. No one like me or any other ministry should have to get on and beg to meet a goal to do one crusade. That shouldn't even be happening if everybody's giving and everybody's partnering. So like for me, um, tithe goes to a certain place. But I still partner every month, uh, one or two hundred dollars a month with other ministries. That's my offering. And so, you guys, the reason I'm adding so much in here is because the Lord said, I want you to teach on it, Liberty. My people have got to understand. And you need to hear my heart and hear God's heart. For real, you guys, I can feel the glory so strong. He wants us to receive the wealth from the wicked. But he needs us to be ready to use it for his kingdom and to be wise with it. He needs to know it's going to go to see his work be done. He can't give it to you if you're not already faithfully giving. He knows he can't trust you. And that's what the verses say. Okay, so number three, I'm going to move on and I'm going to read the final part to this, to this prophecy. Number three, don't be lazy and wasteful. The Lord said, this is key number three. Don't be lazy and wasteful. God gave the servant who did the most work and put in the most effort, the biggest return, and then was given more. The lazy one um, basically was not given anything. They were sent away as a wicked servant. Laziness will keep you from being on the receiving end. If God knows you're not going to do anything awesome for his kingdom, then he's not going to pour it out onto you and your household. If he knows you're going to hold it, um, hold it, use it for yourself, hoard it away, dig a hole, hide it in your yard, whatever, um, you're not actually going to use the funds that he pours into you to promote his kingdom and to see his harvest brought in then he is not going to give you anything because you're a lazy, wicked servant. The wealth transfer is so many things, you guys. It's not just money. 
If you think the wealth transfer is a million bucks being dropped in your lap, this why this word's for you. You need deliverance from a whole lot of things. That's Egypt. That's not God's ways at all. And so here's the final word. I don't think I need to dig that in. Laziness, you guys. If he's given you a little and you're not doing anything with it, the verses were very clear. If you're not doing anything with it, he can't use you. He needs to know you're going to use it to further his kingdom. He needs to know you're already caring about furthering his kingdom, even with the little that you do have. And I don't just mean money. He means your physical body, sacrificing of your time, volunteering, participating, uh, doing whatever he's called you to do to grow yourself spiritually and then be able to go bless and reach others. If you're not doing that, then he can't pour into you because you're not doing it. He's not going to give you finances to back up what's not being done. So you can hoard those finances and just build a bigger kingdom for yourself. He wants you to be doing the work. He wants you to be physically involved in some way, making sure that the kingdom is being promoted and going forth. Amen. And so... Key number one, obedience. Key number two, tithes and offerings. Not just tithe, God already owns that. And under the offerings, you can give homes, land, inheritances, uh, jewelry, gold, silver, um, cars, you know, uh, I don't even know, a plane. I don't know. I'm just naming off things people can own that have value. You can give those things. You don't have to just give money. The pastors, the evangelists, the apostles, the prophets, they will find a way to cash that in and use it for God's kingdom. Amen. And um, you can't judge every ministry on one person who you didn't like. Some guy, when you were, tw it was 20 years ago, some guy who was bad with money at a church somewhere. That can't be an excuse to quit on God. We have to trust him and give him the 10%. And don't be going somewhere where stuff's wrong. Don't put your 10% there. In the sense that if it's possible that somebody could be living in sin or they get exposed or whatever, have some discernment on where you're putting your 10%. Definitely. Um, okay. So then the Lord told me to read Matthew 2.11. And this was... Uh, a week later after this prophecy in Psalms that he gave me. Um, Matthew 2.11 basically um, is where they are presenting the gifts to Jesus when he was born. Part of the Christmas story. They are presenting Jesus with gifts. And this is what the Lord said when he showed me to read that verse. He said, um, the wealth transfer is in process. Body of The body of Christ is about to be presented with gifts the Lord's gifts, gifts that are being removed from the wicked and being given to the righteous. Just as Jesus was presented with gifts, the body of Christ is about to be presented with gifts that have been stolen by wicked men and women. The wealth transfer is upon you. The body of Christ will have everything they need to do what I've called them to do. There will be persecution. There will be things that come up and happen to cause my body to shake. But even in the midst of the turmoil, you will have everything you need to physically go and be revival on the earth. Trust me, my people, the wealth transfer is upon you. You do not need to walk in fear. Walk in faith and trust me in the seasons ahead. If you are obedient in the areas that have been mentioned in the previous prophecies, you will have everything you need. This is what the Lord said. And then he gave me Proverbs 11.25. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. And what that means is what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. If you give to God's kingdom, he'll make sure you're taken care of. You can't have one without the other. You can't expect him to take care of you when you're not even putting him first. And so... The Lord says the process is upon us. The wealth transfer is here. There's more coming than just the other things that have been prophesied like peace, joy, <clears throat> um, 
uh, position, pruning, which does produce more fruit. There's lots of things in the wealth transfer, but the finances are about to be released, you guys, some of the finances. And he said, Liberty, my people have got to position themselves. I want to pour out into their families. I want to use them for my kingdom, but they need to already be faithful with the little. They need to already be putting me first so I can use them. They need to be obedient, they need to not be lazy, and they need to be giving their tithe and their offering. And they need to be doing it with joy. Like with me, as soon as I have an offering that I can give, I, I am so excited and I am I cannot wait to get on and give to whatever ministry or whatever fundraising thing that's happening that God has told me to give to. I mean, I'm like a little kid. You, you wouldn't think that that's a fun thing to give money away, it's amazing. Giving it away is the most amazing thing. And I give a tremendous amount away. And there's a joy in it you cannot explain. God wants you to know that joy. And he wants you to live in that joy so he can keep pouring it in you and then you can keep giving it out with more joy. Amen. Okay, let's pray right now. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. Uh, we just love you, Lord, and we say, <clears throat> use us, use our families. We agree to be a funnel. We agree to use and walk in these keys that you have said so that we can receive from the wealth transfer. We will choose obedience. We will be obedient with tithe and offering. We will not be lazy. We will take what you've already given us, our time, our energy, not just finances, but our time and our energy. And we will not be lazy, Lord. We will, we will put it into your kingdom by serving and volunteering and being a part of, of what you're calling the remnant to do on the earth. We will make sure that Jesus gets revealed. We will not be lazy. We will be obedient and we will give so the kingdom work can happen. And Lord, I just pray your blessing over every person that is faithfully giving to you already. Lord, I just declare right now, open doors. If they're already using the keys you've given them, I declare open doors. I declare wealth transfer to be poured into them, that they will be used for you on a greater scale. And I pray for those who have not been doing it and have questioned and have been unsure and they're just now learning from this word. I just release over them wisdom, Lord, to begin to take the little they have and be faithful to you so you can bless them, Lord. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I honor you. And we give you all of our wealth, Lord. We give you the little that we have. And we say, use us for your kingdom. We wanna be a funnel for your glory. We want to participate with the fruit of seeing souls saved. We thank you, Lord. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to recommend, first of all, you start tithing if you haven't been, first step. Secondly, give an offering somewhere. Pray and see if God tells you to give land, give home, give jewelry, give gold and silver, uh, give finances, whatever it is. Give it. Watch the windows of heaven be opened for you. It's biblical, you guys. The Lord says test him in this. It's biblical. Get rid of conspiracy theory, the conspiracy theories and judging man and not trusting men. Get over it. We're called to be carriers of the of the cross. We have to be the ones doing the work. You're going to have to trust somebody. God needs you to be giving. Amen and amen. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Get it to anyone and everyone, you guys. I'm going to be releasing more of this stuff and be I'm going to be creating some more e-courses also. And we are going to be uh, hopefully soon creating a subscription membership for Spirit Move where you will get content no one else gets. And you can just become a subscription member like you are on, like us, you're subscribed to Spotify, but it'll be to Spirit Move. And everyone on auto pay it and that little bit each month that just automatically comes off your card will go to help us fund all the stuff God's called us to do with the fire nights and the revivals and everything. So um, we love you guys. Thank you so much for those who are already faithfully giving. We couldn't do this without you. Um, those souls in Pakistan, you know, are 
are in the treasures of heaven. They are stored up to you for your giving to see that possible. We're going to be start fundraising for our next one. In the end of October is our next one, and I'm going to need another $100,000 for that one. We're planning on going bigger, and so, and we're believing for mass salvations once again. And so, um, I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed life. Get these keys in action so you can become a funnel and be on the receiving end of the wealth transfer. In Jesus' name.